Hello again, simulation. This is going to be a one-way fluid structural interaction tutorial. Well, not really a tutorial, more of a demo. To get started, drag a fluid flow CFX and a static structural to the workspace. Now, in a fluid structural interaction, you'll have to model both the fluid region and the solid in Design Modeler, and you'll have to share these. So what we'll be modeling today is just a simple pyramid and we're going to have fluid uh, hitting this pyramid much like a nose cone or air spike. So we'll get started in the XY plane here. We'll start with our pyramid. To create a pyramid, just automatically go to create primitives, select pyramid. Change this to add frozen. We will try one meter for our pyramid. And we'll generate. Notice we have a very long pyramid here. This could be a nose cone, this could be an aerospike, although aerospikes are usually much longer and thinner and have somewhat different geometry, but this is just a demo. So we can go ahead and model the fluid region around this. To do that, go to the XY plane, create a sketch. We'll start by creating a rectangle and another rectangle on top of that. And we'll use four dimensions to get this in the, to get the uh, rectangle to be a square. But first, let's delete the first rectangle that we used. Select that line, delete it. Select that line, delete it. Select this line. Notice the selection point has popped up because there's another line underneath it. Make sure you have this line from the first rectangle selected. Delete it and do the same with this. Now we have our rectangle. We can dimension it. Use the length distance. You select, uh, click. Once you have length distance selected, click on a line, then click on an axis, then click somewhere else to place it. Let's use 0.25 meters for each dimension. Um, whoops, wrong one. Cancel that. The last one we need to do is that dimension there, that dimension there. Ah, this line to here. There we go. Now we can extrude this. Since one meter is exactly the uh, length of our pyramid, we'll want a little more than that. Let's go 1.5. Change this to add material. Now we have our fluid region and we have our uh, pyramid inside it. This is all we're going to need. So let's quit out of design modeler. Go to meshing for the fluid. We'll wait for that to attach. Now we're going to mesh both the fluid and the solid region in fluid, or in the CFX mesh. So let's insert a body sizing for the fluid region. Let's try 0.01. Try to update that mesh. Statistics, we have 390,000 nodes. Let's suppress the, well, let's not suppress, let's hide the fluid region. And this is a hideously coarse uh, mesh on the pyramid, so let's fix that. Uh, 
that's a little better. Now ideally in the fluid region we would want some inflation layers off of the pyramid to get better resolution near the pyramid where most of the interaction is going to be happening. So let's show this body and let's attempt to insert an inflation. Now the boundary is the uh, sorry the uh, geometry is the fluid region. The boundary will be several faces. So I'm going to control click and use the selection planes to get the faces of the pyramid. Now it doesn't want to let me do that inflation for some reason. I don't have the time to figure that out, so I'm going to delete that. But ideally you would want an inflation on that. Well, actually, I do have some time, so we will try to figure this out. Let's hide that body. There aren't any faces. Actually, the problem would need to be fixed in design model, and I'm not going to go back and do that. So we'll keep this with the body sizings. Now our element sizing might be a little too coarse, especially because we're not using all of our nodes. Remember we have 512,000. Let's go to 0.008. That's eight millimeter body sizing. We might go a little bit over or we might not quite get to 512,000 with this. Can't be sure which one until you do it. We went over. So let's try 0 0.009. Just trying to get as close to 512,000 as possible. So now we're at 548. I'm just edging up the uh, sizing until we get below 512,000. There we go, 499,000. That works for us, so we're going to close it. I'm going to set up for the fluid. There we go, as we can see our domain has been loaded. First thing we're going to do is turn this into a transient problem. This ANSYS multi-field coupling here is for a two-way fluid structural interaction. Now those are possible to set up and we might consider doing that on, a, on the rocket in the future, but they're extremely complicated and I don't want to go through that right now. We'll stick with the simpler one-way fluid structural interaction. Let's go one second on the total time. Try 0 0.01 for the time steps. Initial time will be zero seconds. Click OK on that. The default domain is currently both the fluid and the solid region. We want to fix that. So let's insert another domain, call it domain1. Uh, there we go, there's our domain1. Let's change this to a solid domain. For the material library, let's do steel. For the solid models, we don't care about heat transfer yet. So let's go none. Initialization. Check that just to clear the warning. Now, under the 
fuller domain, let's start specifying our uh, turbulence model, our air, all this other stuff. We'll stick with air at constant properties. Fluid models go isothermal. Uh, actually, let's neglect heat transfer entirely. Switch this to the SST model for domain initialization. Notice our uh, if this were a rocket, it would the fluid would be flowing in the negative z direction. So we'll stick with zero for the x, zero for the y. Now let's go negative 50 meters a second for z. Static pressure, zero relative. Stick with uh, low intensity. Now let's start defining our boundaries. So as soon as you go to insert a boundary, you have to click this little drop down menu in default domain. Let's call this an inlet. The inlet location is this face. Subsonic normal speed will be 50 meters per second. Consider this low intensity turbulence. The next thing we'll do is apply a symmetry boundary. We're going to control quick the four faces on the outside. Click OK. Let's leave the arrow spike here as a wall. And let's use an entrainment on the back of the fluid region here. Let's keep this subsonic, switch this to an entrainment, zero reference pressure, and zero gradient. The default domain, oh, let's keep domain one. Let's go to solver control. Keep 10 coefficient loops, let's change our residuals to 1e negative 6. And that should be it. Now what we should do is solve the fluid problem. And we can start the mesh for the static structural part of the problem. I'm going to monitor some of this on the or some of the simulation on video here. It should go fairly fast. just going to wait for turbulence to converge in order to change the residual options uh, you can click on the monitor go to monitor properties go for range settings let's go 1e negative 10 we don't care about wall and boundary scale because that always converges right off the bat with the SST model Actually, I'm going to keep all of this on the video because residuals are super low. Well. As soon as turbulence converges, we'll be okay. And then we can go into the model section of the static structural. Normally this would run about a hundred times faster, but the video uh, process takes up a lot of my CPU. That's this uh, task right here. 
I might have been able to get away with uh, more solver partitions because this is 50% and this is 26.5% so I could probably get away with another partition to take my CPU up to 95-98% usage. I'm just kind of rambling since we're waiting for that to converge. This is going to run for the full 100 time steps. I'm not sure if you need that, so I'm going to stop this in progress. We should get results. We'll see if we get results by starting the CFD post. So we do actually have some results here. Now we can feed the solution into the setup and we'll start the model. So since we don't care about the fluid region, we can suppress it. For the mesh, let's go ahead and try the default. Of course, we get way too, it really skimps on nodes when we do this. So let's get that up to 32,000 with a body sizing. Let's try one millimeter, that will probably be way too many. But you never know, you can always hope. In the future, the next big thing might be a two-way fluid structural interaction. So what that will do is solve the CFX problem over a time step. It'll transfer the pressures on the faces to a static structural problem, which will then recompute what the mesh will look like. And it feeds that data back into the uh, mesh for CFX, which then solves another few iterations over another time step and then transfers data and uh, static structural deforms, then it transfers that data back. So there are four or five different solvers that are involved. You have the CFX solver, you have a solver that transfers the CFX data to the static structural, you have a static structural, then you have another mesh deformation kind of thing to go back to CFX and maybe another one in there. I'm not completely sure, but there is more, definitely more than three uh, different solvers that being used there. And of course, in such a problem, you would need to keep your time steps the same in both the fluid and the structural. Actually, now that I mentioned that, you can't use a static structural, it needs to be transient. The uh, transient structural doesn't have too much of a different setup, you just need to specify time steps and that kind of thing. Now obviously one millimeter is way too small for this, so I'm going to go ahead and quit out of that. Let's see, ah yes, if you really want to stop the meshing process you need to kill the meshing server. An error will pop up, but it doesn't matter. Let's try five centimeters. It should be better. And that's a little better, but still we have a ridiculously low amount of nodes. Let's go to 0.01. Let's update. 
So we got several thousand. 43,000, in fact. That's too many. Let's double that figure. 64.90, so we need to go in between. It is kind of a headache doing this interpolation, but there's really no other way to do it. 26,620, this will work for us. Now in the static structural, first of all, let's insert a fixed support. If this were the top of a rocket, this end would be fixed. Click that, click apply. Now we're going to insert a fluid solid interface. This is over faces, and it will be the uh, four surfaces of the pyramid. So we're going to control click those. Click apply. You can leave that at program controlled. Now we're going to uh, now I think we're good there. Under solution, let's insert a equivalent of a mice's strain, a total deformation, and a equivalent of a mice's stress. Now the imported data, we will insert a pressure. So now it's processing the results file and getting the pressure data for these four faces. Now under this imported pressure we can do, we can reselect the four faces again. Click apply. The domain one default is the CFD surface that we're looking for. So we can now import, we have now imported this pressure and we can now solve the problem. Let's go ahead and click solve. Now we should see some very minor deformation, something like the, um, We'll just put it this way, strain should probably be on the nano scale, like something E negative 9 or E negative 8 or something like that. So it was processing the CFD results data, it prepared the mathematical model for the structure, now it's solving and it's writing the results file. Everything looked good. So we can see some elastic strain, of course this is uh, grossly exaggerating it. So look at total deformation. Notice this is way scaled up. So let's go 1.02 scale and you can, can't can see any deformation there because it's so small. Like I said, it's on the nano scale. So 0.56 times 10 to the negative eighth in terms of meters. So just so it deformed just a couple nanometers when on a 50 meter per second uh, fluid. Now let's take a look at stress. Now, it deformed one way uh, towards one of these corners, right? So, if it deforms towards one of the corners, the stress and strain values on the side here, on this axis of symmetry, so to speak, are uh, going to be very, very small. And of course, if the top of the aerospike curves in towards a corner, that's where the stress will be the most. So that's where you have to worry about it breaking. All right, like I promised, this was a fairly short video compared to the other CFD things I've done. And you're actually solving two simulations here, one CFD, one static structural. So I hope you enjoyed, guys, and hopefully we can move on to two-way FSIs in the future. All right, thank you very much. Goodbye.